Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Mami Gama, and first I want to ask you guys all a question. So how many of you guys eat bacon or drink milk? Okay, well, today I'm going to prove to you guys that the consumption of animal products is detrimental to humanity. And when I say detrimental, I mean that every time you consume these products, you're supporting negative effects on your body and negative effects, negative effects on the environment. And uh, animal products means anything from like meat and dairy to like um, fur and leather. So first of all, the consumption of animal products negatively affects your health. Um, I read a book called Meat and Health and it, there have been a number of studies which link uh, protein, animal protein and predispositions to s cancers at, at various sites. For example, uh, two researchers named Armstrong and Daw compared incidence rates for 27 cancers in 23 countries and mortality rates for 14 cancers in 32 countries. And they have been um, correlated to cancers of the pancreas, the breast, and the colon. And this information is also corroborated by the WHO, which has um, classified meat as a group one carcinogen. And in fact, um, I found a statistic that was very surprising. Um, one egg is equivalent to about five cigarettes a day. And um, the consumption of animal products also creates antibiotic resistance. The overuse of animal products of of antibiotics and animal products threatens public health. Um, about 80% of the antibiotics that are used in the U.S. are are used for poultry production. In 2001, the WHO recommended that governments either terminate or rapidly phase out the use of antibiotics in the production of meats. Um, resistant bacteria is um, created by the ways in which the animals are kept and the ways in which they are slaughtered. The resistant bacteria can um, escape from the large livestock. So in, in a number of ways, it can go through the fertilizer, it can be found in the trucks that the animals are transported in, it can um, escape by wind, or even by flies or gnats that are attracted to the, to the manure. Um, the consumption of animal products also creates new diseases which would otherwise not exist. Antibiotic use can promote creation of superbugs, which can contaminate meat and poultry and cause hard to cure diseases in people. Even if the illnesses don't cause, um, even if using the antibiotic doesn't cause direct illness, um, the bacteria is very uniquely equipped to exchange genetic immunity via their plasmids with other bacteria that they encounter. And this is why the FDA has um, been proposing for decades to um, phase out the use of antibiotics. Um, the Consumers Union also believes that a prudent measure would be to drastically reduce the antibiotics on food and animals to eliminate, um, to eliminate the use altogether. Um, for my second point, I'm trying to state that consuming animal products um, causes irreversible damages to the earth. So to satisfy the meat and dairy company, um, the meat and dairy um, consumption companies create dioxins. Dioxins are highly toxic byproducts that are mostly found in manufacturing processes. And they're an environmental pollutant. They can cause reproductive and developmental problems. And the WHO states that 90% of human interaction with dioxins is found in the food in food and um, meat uh, food such as meat and dairy um, the meat and dairy industry consumes an unnecessary amount of water it takes a much larger amount to produce um, one pound of meat than it would to um, to produce crops <clears throat> the consumption of animal products uh, contributes to more than one quarter of the water footprint of humanity. The consumption of animal products also contributes to global warming. Um, in an article product, um, published by the British Journal of, Nutritional, of Nutrition, um, in 2016, a Brazilian study found that greenhouse gas emissions 
from beef intake was similar to Brazilian citizen, citizen traveling more than 5,000 kilometers by car. Uh, the meat and dairy industry also damages neighborhoods that are located near the slaughterhouses. So um, in a documentary called What the Hell that I was watching yesterday, uh, the way in which the animals are raised creates, um, creates waste which seeps into the water and the nearby, um, nearby ponds and it damages people's lungs and it, and it creates um, a bad smell in the air. So um, I hope that you guys reconsider every time you eat meat because it causes damage to your personal health and it causes damage to the Earth's environment. Thank you. All right, the uh, audience surveys and detention devices, okay. The propositions clearly identified. You have a preview, but uh, I think it's a little unclear that, that it is the preview. I finally figured out that that's exactly what you were talking about, but it wasn't very distinctive in the opening section of the speech. However, you do signpost those points pretty clearly uh, in the body of the speech, so it's not a, a big issue. Um, the supporting minor claims underneath each of the secondary claims, that gets a little complicated because issues start running together and uh, you may need to have a little bit more separation between them. I, there was, you know, I was listening to something about antibacterial, uh, excuse me, um, antibiotics and then there's a bacteria issue, and then there are the superbugs, and I know that they're all connected, but uh, the way that it's being presented, it sounded like they were separate issues, and then issues that are separate on the second point, they all tend to run together also, so that was a little bit problematic. You need to probably structure that information in the minor claims a little bit more. Still not too bad, it's, uh, everything is clear for the most part, but it needs to be a little bit clearer. I thought that you had some uh, good information that you're presenting. There are a couple of places where uh, there is not much information being presented. For example, the stuff about uh, the um, bacteria and the superbugs. I, it sounds like you are reading something, but I have no idea where it came from, and that's a little bit problematic. There are a couple of places where you're depending on uh, uh, WHO and FDA, for instance, to um, you know, their recommendations, but we don't really get any explanation about why they have those recommendations. You're just taking the suggestion that they have recommendations as proof that there is, in fact, a problem. And I thought that there was a little bit less quantification of that than there was on some of the other issues. Uh, you know, the it sounded like you said an egg is equal to five cigarettes. Uh, that's where that came from. I don't know. That's the same sort of thing that I'm talking about. Sometimes there's information here that sounds like it's specific and then we don't really get a source on it. Sometimes there's stuff that uh, is a claim and there's no evidence on it, but there's also good places where there is good evidence in the presentation. So it just, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I think that you've got a good argument here and good information, um, but it needs to be tightened up a little bit in the way that it's being put together. The presentation is generally solid. I think you have a nice way of uh, connecting with the audience. Um, the um, documentary is a little bit thin at the end in describing something. Uh, the information there, I'm not sure, is as convincing as it would probably be if I was watching it. All right, thank you.